everybody. Chuck Barone here. Welcome to the show today on Thursday, June 23rd, 2022. Busy day today. Lots of stuff to talk about. Lots of stuff to report. Um, I want to say before we get into everything, just how grateful I am that you're all here and watching these videos for the support you guys have given us. It's just been absolutely incredible, overwhelming. I can't tell you how grateful I am, guys. Anyway, let's look into this market today. Um, it was a good day in the market. Stocks had a nice day. Um, they started out hot. Futures were good in the morning. They had a little bit of a lull in the middle of the day, in the afternoon, and charged to a nice finish and ended up up pretty good today. So it was a nice little rally in the stock market today. Uh, the bond market, well, you guys have been paying attention to that if you've been listening to my videos and especially Greg's. There's just this phenomenon happening where the 10-year bond rate yield is coming down in the face of these massive rate hikes by the Fed. It literally is defying gravity, okay, uh, which as we know is impossible. So there's something funky going on in that market. Uh, metals today had a very quiet day, flat day, flat to down just a little bit. Uh, the dollar was relatively unchanged, up just a few bips, the dollar index. And the dollar is holding its own right now, and I think the dollar is going to stay strong in the face of these rate increases. Um, Bitcoin bounced up nicely from its, I think the support line is around 20,000, as I've been saying, and it bounced up nicely from there, so it's holding that support line very well. Um, I would like to see it move up even a little bit higher. If it's going to rally, I'd like to see it continue the rally and not keep. It looks like it's kind of in the trough right now between 20 and 21,000. It's kind of been bouncing, bouncing, bouncing for the past week or so. I'd like to see it break out one way or the other, and we'll have a little bit better of an indication of uh, where it's going to go in the near term. Um, so the markets today were good for people. I think that uh, it was a satisfying day, and it was a day that you can afford to look at your portfolio and not go, oh my God, another horrible day. Um, things turned out okay today. Um, stuff that it's notable that you guys should know about. Uh, Chairman Powell had his redo today. He got to testify in the House rather than the Senate. And it was pretty much the same old, same old guys. I mean, these, these shows are more bread and circus, so this would be the circus part of it. Um, the, the politicians get to do their posturing and their little speech fine to try to, you know, drum up their donations or whatever their deal is, impress their constituents or potential voters coming up in the midterms. And Powell, of course, is like the boxer or the fighter that's getting stuff thrown at him from 100 angles and he's bobbing and weaving. Um, some notable stuff coming out of the testimony, though. You know, the, the Congress critters trying to pin him down uh, one way or the other, um, trying to get him to admit that rate hikes are going to cause a recession. And he was saying that, this is a pretty much a quote, of, that he, the Fed is not trying to invoke a recession to bring down demand, that they don't have to have a recession to achieve their aims, which we all know is a bunch of hooey. But they did get him to admit that these rate hikes and future rate hikes may lead to a recession. So they did kind of finally get him to admit that. I like the phrasing of may, because as you guys who've been watching these videos over the past week know, um, I believe we're already in a recession and the GDP numbers coming out at the end of this quarter are gonna confirm that for us. Um, he also went on to say, and this was the one that really struck me, was that the Fed, with their rate hikes and the tools at their disposal, can't really do anything about the prices of food and energy. So the Fed is going to be no help at the supermarket, and they're going to be no help at the gas pump. I don't know. What good are they? If, if they can't tend to some simple stuff, how are they going to deal with all this super complex stuff? I mean, it's just, I thought that's what, what their job was, is to keep the dollar stable. If the dollar was stable, we wouldn't be looking at this, this stuff. It's just, it's crazy. So same old, same old. Same old posturing from our friends and the politicians. You know, and I, when I say friends, I say that loosely, okay? Um, you know, the Republicans want to blame everything on the Democrats and Biden. 
The Democrats want to blame anything, everything on uh, market conditions or greedy corporations or whatever their excuse of the day is. So it was pretty much the same old, same old, same old. Um, another item of interest that we want to talk about a little bit today is oil prices being under pressure over the past week or so. Oil, you know, the chart really looks kind of crummy to me, but I think we're seeing some signs here that oil's due for a bounce. Uh, the first sign I'm seeing is that President Biden is fixing to go to Saudi Arabia to kiss some Saudi butt to try to get them to add the supply. Now, this Saudi visit is going to really be an awkward one for Biden because it wasn't that long ago where he was a pretty big critic of the Saudi government. And they have been misbehaving, as we all know. Um, when he tried to call Saudi, they actually wouldn't even take his call. And now he's going to go over there to do what he's got to try to do to get them to increase supply. I think that I would not be surprised if the Saudis receive Biden, treat him respectfully, and respectfully decline his request. I think he might come out of there empty-handed. Pretty hard to say no to the President of the United States, but you know how many people won't take his call either? So it'll be interesting to see where that goes. Uh, the second thing is, I was listening to the AAA report, and AAA reporting that they expect 42 million people to take road trips this summer season. They're predicting a record amount of people on the road this summer. So I think that this whole idea of demand is going to be dampened that and it, it, and it will be i mean people are already doing less but gasoline is a hard one to run away from and i really don't believe and obviously neither does AAA, that people are just not going to take a vacation this year because gas is more expensive you know they probably won't be able to do as much eating out or some of the stuff they wanted to do on their vacation but they're still going to go and they're still going to buy gas so that's an encouraging sign i think that demand is going to pick up here um, and the third thing, and now this is kind of a weird one, but I've been told, and I've read reports, I have not seen it with my eyes, that they're already changing the gas pumps around the country to accommodate an additional digit on the price per gallon. So they're preparing to be able to price gas over $10. As it stands right now, I guess the way the machines work, there's only that one digit, so they can go up to nine ninety nine nine, but can't go over ten dollars i've been told that uh they're doing that now or they're preparing a way to do that where they can charge these double digits so i think that everybody's expecting this oil bounce to come and i think it's going to come i think that uh in the very near future we're going to be paying more for gas we haven't really got any relief here in las vegas and i paid 569 um and honestly, I, I'm just waiting for the next bounce of the price where it goes over $6 per gallon here in Vegas. I don't think that's going to be very long off. Uh, we had the unemployment numbers come out today, and the report was strong. So we still have a strong labor market right now. Uh, jobs are out there, and people are paying more for these jobs. Um, if you want to consider, you know, $12 or $15 an hour paying more. And when I hear these numbers, I'm constantly astounded. I mean, if you think about it, if a person's making $15 an hour, that translates to working a 40-hour work week to $600 a week. Now, it might be a little bit of a burden on business to pay that. But think of the burden of trying to live on that, man. I mean, that is not exactly a gigantic income where you're going to have tons of discretionary income at your disposal. Um, those are the people who are really going to be the ones who suffer in this inflation. So I hope that we can get this labor market in order where all the money doesn't always skew to the top and some of it will end up with the people who are actually doing the work every day. Um, the interesting thing about Powell's testimony is he was saying that these rate increases are, benef are designed to benefit the labor market. Now, what he's implying there is not that he's a friend of the little guy, of the schmuckatellis, you know, the working guy. What he's talking about is the wage price spiral. 
Now let me kind of step back and explain what that means. This was a phenomenon in the 70s when we had our ladder into the 80s, the last big inflation. And what happens is prices go up. So people at work demand more money for their labor to accommodate being able to pay these higher prices. So the boss wants to keep the employee, gives him this extra money, but as a result of giving that extra money, has to raise his prices to accommodate paying that extra money out. And it just starts to spiral where they make more money, the prices go up. Now their wages are inadequate again, they make more money, the prices go up, and it just starts the spiral that leads to catastrophic inflation numbers. Um, that's what Volcker's worried about. Um, I was reading a, a report that they said if they were computing the CPI numbers today the same way they did back in the late 70s and into the 80s when Volcker was the Fed chair, the actual CPI wouldn't have been 8.6. It would have been more like 15%. So keep that in mind as you see this because you know people are talking about these increases in prices and when I see at the gas pump, at the supermarket, it seems like everything, even the barber raised the price of a haircut $6. Um, everything's going up more than just these incremental tiny little rate increases. So keep an eye on things and it's going to be a wild ride, guys. It really is. Um, anyway, today's not going to be a real long video. It's pretty much all I got to report on today. Um, if you haven't already, go watch Greg's video. He's got some information about the debt markets and some of the interesting things that are happening there. Um, in closing, I just want to say to everybody, thank you, thank you, thank you for watching these videos, for all of your comments, likes, and shares, and the questions you guys have been asking. It's just amazing. I'm not, I, I promise I'm going to get to answering some of these questions on the show. I've been going onto the comment section every day, sometime during the day, to try to answer some questions on that comment que in that section. Please continue to ask these questions. It just makes this so much fun, so good for me. So please keep asking those questions. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the station. Um, oh, one last thing before I go. Now, I'm not usually much for these big conspiracy theories or big rumor mongering guy, but I've been hearing this story repeatedly, 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 repeatedly about this diesel fuel crisis that's coming up. Um, I guess the crux of the story is that uh, there's some additive that they have to have to add to diesel fuel, and they're basically running out of this additive, which means that diesel they're going to run out of diesel fuel which will shut down trucking in this country and, and I, in essence, shut down the whole country. Everything gets trucked in this country. I mean, imagine if they had to ship everything by air, prices would be astronomical. Now, I got to admit, I've looked around, I went online and searched, I looked everywhere I have sources I could find, and I have not been able to find any type of official confirmation of this, this diesel fuel thing. So if you guys know anything about it, if you've heard anything about it, get in the comments section. Let's start a little bit of discussion up about this. I really would like to see if this is true, because if it is, this is something we all need to get prepared for. Um, again, I appreciate you all being here today. I look forward to talking to you again tomorrow. We'll wrap this week up. It's been a very eventful week. Uh, God bless you all, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Thanks.